one thing that is uh, something I always like to stress when I do workshops is talking about playing the syllables. And that's a way, if you've played one tune the same way for like, if you've been playing banjo for a long time or for a very short time, but especially if you've been playing for a long time and you have certain ways you play certain tunes, um, like Nine Pound Hammer, I'll play it without really trying to think of how the words are or the syllables of the song. But, um, <laughs> might recognize that as nine pound hammer but if you want to play the syllables and this is something that John Hartford talked about uh, he told me about it one time and and said that Earl would lots of not always but lots of times play the syllables of a song so in other words you can start that way or oh, the nine pound hammer. you're actually playing the syllables so it's um, sax players talk about this when they're uh, you know, playing a ballad or something. They like to know the words to the song. And so you can do that with Nine Pound Hammer. Oh, the Nine Pound Hammer is a little too heavy for my son. One example, or uh, I always use this as an example also, Rolling My Sweet Baby's Arms. Earl's original solo for Mercury Records in around 1950 was something like... Uh, <laughs> now, I'm not sure what this is. Except the world's greatest Scruggs lick. And one of the... Right. But that's not really the melody. You don't sing rolling my sweet baby. Right, right. So if you want to play the syllables, and of course that's how Earl did play it, but more to the point he would go, or you could go. thing and I, I wrote this beginning banjo book years ago for Alfred Publishing and and I asked after I'd written it I thought I need some other input from other players and I asked Bela and uh, Allison Brown and Alan Mundy etc but I asked John Hartford what what would you say and he said timing timing is everything mm -hmm. and he was right he had great time uh, so that's the advice he gave so work whatever you're doing I mean it doesn't have to be the entire practice time you have but definitely spend a lot of time with a metronome because it just feels so good to get your, you know, I mean, I spent about 40 minutes before doing this right now playing with a drum machine, working various things out. And I just wrote this, so I don't have a name for it yet. I may make a mistake or two because it's brand new, but let me see if I can do this. advice on how to develop speed. Um, one thing I've, I've, I've pointed out to people once in a while, if you can do this, you know, if you can't play a whole tune really fast, just do three notes. Something like that. Or, 
Do an alternating thumb roll as fast as you can to a forward roll. And it means you are capable of doing that. Your fingers will move that fast. Mm -hmm. Have you been working on a new album? I have. Uh, I've been working on it for at least 10 years now, <laughs> which is a very long, very long time. It's called This Favored Land, and it's, it hopefully will come out in September. It looks like it's going to actually finally come out in September. Okay. I've not been recording for 10 years. Uh, <laughs> I started writing. It, it's a, basically a Civil War-based story, and I'm not going to go into any detail on it. I all. think you actually told me about this um, about 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's taken that long. I want to ask Earl, Mr. Scruggs, that is, uh, what would you say to a beginner? And he said, play with as many different people as you can. Mm -hmm. It's not like wait two years till you're ready. Right. An absolute beginner. I said, even if they're just starting out. Yeah, absolutely. Find people to play with. Even if you're just strumming chords. Mm -hmm. I had a request for Nashville blues. Mm -hmm. This is in the Scruggs book, and it's an amazing tune. Earl wrote it, needless to say. I think he recorded on something called Town and Country, one of Planet Scruggs' last albums. with this thing called the Golden Clipper, and I am in love with this banjo. And the banjo is amazing. And uh, one thing, I, another thing I want to mention related to that is mm -hmm. uh, this guy, Mike Munford, who's one of the most amazing banjo players there are. He's a great banjo player, but he's yeah. arguably the greatest setup guy. I don't want to in, offend anybody. There are right. a lot of great setup people. He's, he's in York, Pennsylvania, or near there. But he just set this up. And he is really an amazing setup person. And this banjo, which sounded amazing all the way through, sounds even better right now. And this is for you folks, if you can find a way to get your banjo set up, if there's someone good near you, or uh, I, I hate to be plugging it again, but I have Mike Munford do 12 lessons on my site in the interview area on mm -hmm. setting up your banjo. Because once you get your banjo set up, right and it really sounds good it just all you want to do is play and that's how i'm feeling you know i mean i always feel that way but even more these days and one thing that really helps in this case is this deering smile bridge and there's even a little smile on it i had to pay extra for that but <laughs> it, uh, it's something that jens kruger developed from what i understand and whereas most bridges along the bottom feet they're all in a line they're all lined up like that right. The, what um, what Jens did is he came up with the idea, since when you put the, uh, the uh, bridge on the head, the tension of the string is on the bridge, and the bridge is going to be pushing down on the head. And so there's this indentation. And so having square, squared off feet, it's going to, they're not going to kind of make total contact with the head. So by having, there's like a little arc that is uh, cut mm -hmm. through the three feet. And so that when it sits down in the head a little bit, when it sinks down in a little bit, there's total contact with the head. And I remember when I, when, uh, I was at this Banjo Camp North thing and Greg, Greg was there, Greg Daring, and he put one of these things on, or he handed it to me and I put it on and I started playing. And Alan Mundy was like 100 feet away just talking to someone and went, what's that? Because there was so, such a big sound that there had not been before. 
And um, I don't know, I just love this bridge. <laughs> Thank you. So long, everybody. Bye-bye. Appreciate it.